Hello, this is Eric Chappelle, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2014 Essentials, and this is the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 6. For this exercise, we're going to take this drawing containing alignments and add a bunch of different labels to it. In fact, we've got five different tasks that we need to complete. The first task is to add labels to the road center lines. That includes stations and ticks and also geometry points. So to do that I'm going to click one of the alignments and go up to add labels, add edit station labels. Now my hope is is that there is an, a label set already in the drawing that I can that I can use instead of building the label set from scratch. So to test that I'm going to click the import label set command and see if there's anything here that might work and I notice that I've got major, minor, and geometry points. Looks like a good candidate. I'm going to try it out. Click OK. And you can see that I've got stations, geometry points, and also tick marks labeled. Now I need to apply those same labels to all of the alignments or all of the center line alignments in the drawing so I'm just going to repeat that Add Labels, Add Edit Station Labels, Import Label Set, Major, Minor, and Geometry Points, and I'll do the same thing for Logan Court. So now we have labels for all three center line alignments and that completes our first task. For the next task, I'm asked to create station offset labels for the endpoints of all right-of-way geometry, beginnings and endings of curves, beginnings and endings of straight segments, and corners. To do that, I'm going to go to my Annotate tab and launch the Add Labels command. And I'll be labeling an alignment, station offset fixed point. And the style I'm going to use here is station and offset. And one of the nice things about doing these um, Essentials and Beyond exercises is we do give you some flexibility. So if you want to try a different style or you want to um, work with maybe some styles that you use in your company, um, feel free to do that. Basic Circle with Cross will work just fine for the marker style. So I'm going to click Add. And the first set of labels I'm going to create actually exist along Jordan Court. So I'll select Jordan Court as my reference alignment and I'll start to pick up key points on my right-of-way. In fact, I'm going to turn on my O-snaps and pick up the, uh, the endpoint O-snap. You can see I have that set right there. And I'll just kind of work my way along one side of Jordan Court, picking up all the endpoints that I come across. I'm going to turn off dynamic input. input. It'll uh, clear my screen up a little bit. Now I was just reviewing the video from last year and I noticed that I inadvertently picked up the, uh, or mistakenly picked up not only the right of way but also all of the edge of pavement labels and we really don't need to do that because the instructions of the exercise ask us just to do the right of way. So this time, this year, and this pan function can be a little bit tricky with the uh, while you're picking station and offset at the same time. Um, instead of doing all of the edges of pavement, I'm actually just going to do the right of way this time. It actually reduces the number of labels quite a bit that we have to do. With last year's exercise, I had to edit out some of the time because it was just kind of boring after creating so many labels. So I'll press enter and now if I'm going to do Madison Lane, I have to repeat the command and pick the Madison Lane alignment because I want the stations and offsets now to reference the Madison Lane alignment. So I'll pick up some more points. Oop, got a bad one there. I can, no problem, I can just erase that. And then we've got a few on Logan Court, so I'll click the Add button again, pick Logan Court this time. And it looks like I have about four different points on Logan Court. 
So now what I want to do is make this look a little cleaner. So I'll click the labels and drag them out to some open space. That takes away the, the box around the label and makes a leader appear. So I can move these labels around to locations that are better suited. In fact, there's see some, see some other labels that could stand to be leadered as well. And the labeling is really important, so it has to be clean. You can't have any conflicts that make the labels difficult to read. So you're going to spend a good bit of time doing these kinds of things in your in your drawings, improving the quality of them by you know making the labeling easier to read. Now that that task is complete, we're ready to move on to the next task. For that task, we are asked to create tag labels along the alignments, starting on Jordan Court with tag number one and working our way downward, then to Madison Lane and to Logan Court. So I'll change my label type to multiple segment, and note that the circle tag label style has been utilized. I'll go ahead and click the Add button and select the Jordan Court alignment, and then Madison Lane, and then Logan Court. You'll notice right off the bat that the labels are not the correct numbers and that I'll need to renumber them. So to take care of that, I'll click the alignment, click the renumber tags command off of the ribbon, and I'll go right to the settings option so that I can adjust the starting numbers and rather than look at the different components I'll just set everything to one. Click OK and start picking some tags in the order that I want them numbered. For the first few I'm going to have to deal with a duplicate number situation and I'll just go ahead and say create duplicate for each one. Eventually I'll run out of duplicates and I won't be prompted for that anymore. So I'm just working my way downward in the order that I want the tags numbered. Where I need to, I'm saying to go ahead and create duplicates. Once I get to the end of Jordan Court, I can move on to Madison Lane. And then finally to Logan Court, which just has one tag. Now we're ready to move on to the next task in our exercise, which is to create tables for, for the alignments. Now this can be interpreted two different ways. One is to create a table for each alignment, and another is to create one single table that shows all of the alignment information. I'm going to show you both ways. The first way we'll look at is to create an, a, a table for all of the alignments at once, and this is actually the easier way. And the way it's done is by style. So I'm going to say select by label or style and check the box next to both circle tag styles, the one for lines and the ones for curves. And when I click OK, it's going to pick up all the 
circle tag styles in the drawing and include all of them in the table. You can see all three alignments listed in the, uh, in the top of the table. Now we'll look at creating individual tables, one for each alignment. And um, there's no magical way to do that. The best way is to simply select by picking the label. So I'll hit the pick button and I'll just work my way along Jordan Court selecting the tags that I want to select. Um, I see a tag there that I missed, that I missed renumbering. But um, simply going to select the tags and those are the tags that will be included in the table and they just so happen to be only tags associated with Jordan Court. Now the table's pretty smart. It actually picks up that I only uh, picked tags from that alignment so it only lists one alignment in the in the top of the table. Now I'll just repeat that procedure for the other two alignments in the drawing for Madison Lane which only has a few tags, two or three. And then Logan Court will do last and that one only has one tag. So it may seem kind of tedious but it actually is not all that bad and in a lot of cases you are asked to supply a separate table for each alignment. Now the final task we are asked to complete for uh, for this exercise is to continue cleaning up the the labels. Um, take care of areas where labels overlap and uh, make sure that everything is clean and easy to read. So I do see a few uh, issues here that we need to address. Here's some overlapping labels so luckily Civil 3D has this wonderful drag state that lets you pick up a label and move it and it automatically creates a le leader and and sets the justification of the leader it automatically you know reorients the text and and uh, lots of other cool things to make the the process of cleaning up these labels much more quick and easy than uh, than it than it was before Civil 3D came along I can even take my tag labels and and straighten those out a bit um, I really don't want to create the effect th that I see there with the drag state, so I'm going to move it, slide it along the alignment, put it in a different location that is not in conflict with the Jordan Court street name label. Intersections are good places where you have lots of labeling conflicts because there's usually a lot going on there. So I'll just continue to work my way th through the drawing and uh, take care of any issues where labels are conflicting with one another. So that concludes the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 6.